the interstellar starship Avalon may be seen sailing through space, bound for a colonized planet known as Homestead 2. All of its quarters are unoccupied, and the ship is on autopilot. The 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers are in hibernation. Suddenly, the spacecraft travels through an asteroid shower, which weakens its shields. Power is sent to the primary shield, but the spacecraft is on a collision path with a massive asteroid. Suddenly, the asteroid impacted the spacecraft, generating a lot of problems. The spacecraft starts to repair itself, but one of the hibernation pods activates. Jim Preston, a mechanical engineer, was the passenger who was woken. His pod opens, and an automatic mechanism assists him in waking up. It informs him that he has been in suspended animation for 120 years, and that the ship is just four months away from reaching Homestead 2. He has been promised that he would be able to spend that time enjoying the ship's luxury amenities. Before his arrival on the planet, Jim is given information concerning his ID ban, his cabin, and the principal activities in which he will participate. Excited and frightened to meet the others on the ship, he prepares, leaves his stateroom, and enters an automated lesson designed for a large learning group. Jim seems concerned as the hologram describes the condition on Earth, calling it overcrowded, costly, and overdone. It urges him to save his questions until the session concludes, but Jim continues wondering why he's the only one there. He knows the hologram cannot respond to him and searches for other individuals. He arrives in the main concourse of the ship. No one is present, but an automated information desk assists. Jim requests to speak with a real person, and it directs him to a steward, but when he discovers that no one else is around, he requests to speak with the captain. When he arrives at the bridge, despite being unable to enter, he notices that none of the primary crew is awake. Jim ultimately visits the observatory, where he learns that the spacecraft is really 90 years distant from Homestead 2. He thinks he awoke too soon, so he hurries back to the concourse and sends a message to Earth, wondering what he should do since he has no idea how to return to sleep. The communications technology warns him that the costly call to Earth will take about 55 years to get a response. Jim is devastated. He goes about till he reaches the ship's bar, where he meets another individual. Something about him strikes me as unusual when he speaks to the bartender. When Jim tries to bring him a drink, he finds he is an android. It's named Arthur. Jim wants to learn more from him but he needs help explaining to the robot how he was able to arrive ahead of schedule. The following day, Jim wakes up in his cabin and walks to the cantina, only to discover that the majority of the items on the menu are only available to gold-class travelers. He gets some ordinary coffee and attempts to find out how to repair his hibernation chamber. After gathering all of the necessary gear, he successfully operates the device and rests down inside a pod, but nothing occurs. He then chooses to utilize the equipment he obtained to get access to the crew's sleeping chambers. That does not work either. Small problems occur throughout the ship. Jim continues going to the pub to drink, but largely to speak with Arthur. The robot offers him some suggestions persuading him to break into one of the gold classrooms and have some fun aboard the ship. Jim tries every restaurant, game, and entertainment system. However, as time goes on, being alone becomes more unpleasant. He gets drunk one day and wanders about the sleep pods, eventually ending himself in an airlock containing spacesuits built for spacewalks. Jim puts on a suit and enters the airlock, pulling a lever and pressing a button to open the door. When he steps outside the ship, he is captivated by the view. He is the sole conscious human being at that point in time. Jim releases the magnets from his boots and hovers in space, distraught. He returns inside and removes the suit, but continues to the airlock without it. He pushes the lever, ready to end it all, but changes his mind at the last minute dashes back inside, and slips on the bottle. Jim gets up and is immediately attracted to Aurora, a lady in one of the pods. He looks for her files in the directory and listens to her passenger interview, falling for her. Later, he was observed sitting next to her pod, continuing to listen to her interviews. Back at the pub, he reads some of her work and discusses it with Arthur. He gets preoccupied with the irony of his condition 
traveling to another planet in search of a better life, waking up early but not arriving, and meeting his ideal girlfriend only to discover that she is beyond his reach. Jim continues to think about her and begins to consider waking her awake as well. He discusses it with the android, but he still needs to comprehend the situation. If he wakes her awake for his game, he will leave her to perish on the ship with him. Jim first decides against it, but as time passes, he is unable to let go. Until one day, he reconsiders his decision. He walks to her pod and successfully activates it. As she wakes up and goes through the same process he did, he hides and returns to his room. A little later, he heads to the main concourse, hoping to see her, and there she is just as confused as he was a year before. Jim assures her they are the only ones awake and brings her to the observatory. Then, he informs her that he is unable to contact the crew or the ship's primary commands. Aurora panics, frightened, and wants to return to her pod. When they arrive there, Jim explains that there is no special technology aboard the spacecraft that can let them return to sleep basically notifying her that they are trapped. They return to the concourse, and he informs her that she should rest since she has just emerged from hibernation. She feels terrible for him since he has to spend more than a year alone on the ship. Jim returns to the bar, remorseful of what he did. He requests Arthur not to inform Aurora that he woke her up. The next day, Aurora awakens. She returns to the concourse and asks the automated information desk about the hibernation pods. Jim meets her there, and they go for breakfast. As they depart, the information desk has a problem. In the cantina, Aurora notices that Jim has been eating the same breakfast for over a year and orders him one of the gold class meals. They discuss the prospect of mending the pods, but Aurora, unlike Jim, is not willing to give up. She examines the infirmary and then looks through research records. Ultimately, she arrives at the crew's hibernation rooms and attempts to burst the doors open. Jim detects further faults throughout the ship. Some years later, Aurora regrets her existence on the Avalon. She writes, jogs about the ship, and swims in the pool, becoming more conscious of her surroundings. She walks to the cantina to interview Jim, believing that his tale would be intriguing. She questions why he came to the colony. Jim first responds with business platitudes, but then goes on to say that he thinks he can be someone and make a life in the new world. They eventually get to the observatory, where Aurora explains why she is there. Unlike the rest of the passengers on the ship, she has a round-trip ticket. She planned to go to Homestead 2, live there for a year, and then return to Earth to be the first journalist to do so, writing the greatest story of all time. Aurora gradually loses hope of resolving their present situation, and Jim devises a plan to cheer her up. He takes her dancing to the movie theater and the basketball court. Finally, he brings her to the bar, where she meets Arthur. She relaxes briefly before recalling their circumstances. Jim is left alone with a robot, feeling terrible about what he has done to her. Aurora comes into the observatory the next time he is spotted working with something, only to discover a miniature of the Chrysler building he constructed for her. They then go on a date at a pub. They lunch together and tell stories about their lives. She informs him that her father died when she was a teenager. After supper, Jim takes Aurora to the airlock, where they put on their spacesuits. They go out on a spacewalk together. Jim now has someone to share his beautiful experience with. Jim turns off the magnets in their boots, and they float together in space. They return inside and instantly kiss before retreating to his cabin and sleeping together. Soon later, they begin living as a couple. Aurora moved into his cabin and began writing about her experiences on the cruise. They exercise, dine, and sleep together. Jim examines the ship further and discovers the hydroponics bay. He brings Aurora flowers. One day, the ship passes by a red giant, so they go to the observatory to observe it. It's Aurora's birthday, so they spend the night celebrating at one of the ship's various restaurants and then at the bar. Jim goes to the restroom and prepares the ring he created for Aurora. While she remains in the bar, conversing with Arthur. The robot informs Aurora that Jim purposefully awakened her, unaware that he was still keeping this a secret. Jim reappears, and she confronts him in complete bewilderment. She flees, 
angry and terrified. Jim returns to his cabin to discover all of her belongings gone. He runs into her in the cantina the following day, but the instant he talks, she flees. Aurora is desperate. One night, she walks over to Jim's cabin and pinches and kicks him intending to murder him. Jim apologizes and explains his conduct to her over the phone, saying that she has been avoiding him. He tells her that he fell in love with her, but Aurora doesn't care. She cannot forgive him for sacrificing her life. Another failure occurs one night when Jim is inside his cottage. The spacecraft has a major fault, and the primary command terminates. Later, he enters the elevator, and it malfunctions. Aurora comes into the main concourse and notices that Jim has planted a tree there. Then she visits the cantina, where the food dispensary is likewise malfunctioning. Suddenly, both of them hear the deck chief's voice over the intercom, inquiring who planted the tree. They both rush onto the concourse and see Gus Mancuso standing in front of Jim's tree. They present themselves and brief the chief on the situation. He needs to see how three pods could fail. Mancuso brings them to the bridge, where he determines that there is a problem with the spacecraft, but the system's information must be manually examined. When they leave the bridge, a robot almost falls on them and the two of them inform Mancuso that breakdowns are becoming more prevalent throughout the ship. He argues that should only happen if he demonstrates how to acquire the data. Mancuso checks on the pods as Jim joins him. He found out what happened to Aurora's pod. The deck chief considers Jim's actions to be horrible. When Aurora arrives, he is at the bridge, examining to gather data. They discuss what happened to her pod but he says he can't do anything about it. Jim enters with a 16th broken robot. Mancuso feels the hibernating sickness and retires to rest, but when he steps out, he coughs up blood. Aurora can't sleep that night, so she goes swimming instead. Suddenly, there is gravity loss throughout the ship, and she begins to die as the water from the pool travels around her. The gravity drive restarts, and she narrowly escapes alive. They cross paths while searching for Mancuso. The three of them are back on the bridge, slowly figuring out what has been going on with the ship. Mancuso discovers that something occurred two years ago, destroying a critical system. They must identify and repair the source of the problem, while the whole ship attempts to fill the space. If they don't repair it, the whole vessel will get stuck. They proceed to investigate the situation, but Mancuso collapses, so Jim and Aurora take him to the hospital. He is dying, and there are no medicines that can prevent it or extend his life. Some time later, the three of them meet in the observatory, and Mancuso hands Jim his ID bracelet and instructs them to repair the ship, and Jim dies. Suddenly, the lights turn an ominous red, and the ship begins to shake. Jim informs Aurora that he needs her aid, and they rush to engineering, but the gravity drive fails again. And then another one strikes Arthur as well. Jim deactivates him. They eventually arrive at engineering and begin searching for the issue. They discover it in the power plant, and as they open the hatch, Aurora is pulled in. The asteroid produced a breach in the hull at that location. Jim is also pulled in but he clings onto the hatch as it continues to close around him. He eventually gets pulled in, but they swiftly close the opening. After resolving that issue, Jim learns that there are other breaches in the hull. They trace the meteor's route and discover that it has collided with a reactor control computer. Jim believes he can obtain new components for it. They discovered and replaced the component, but the reactor vending procedure continued to fail. They try it manually, but it fails again. Jim realizes he has to open the vent door from the exterior of the ship so they can cool down the reactor. Both of them head to the airlock, and as he prepares to go, he hands Aurora Mancuso's bracelet since he may not return. She assists him with a chute, and as he enters the airlock, she instructs him to return since she cannot survive on the ship without him. Aurora returns to the reactor where temperatures have reached dangerous levels. As Jim approaches the vent from the outside and notices the door, a bolt from the reactor strikes her arm. The temperature in the reactor room increases as he attempts to open the vent door by bypassing it. He quickly understands he'll have to physically keep the door open so the reactor can vent and informs Aurora. She dislikes the idea, but he goes ahead with it and instructs her to vent the reactor. She does not want him to die and they dispute 
but he insists that they rescue the other people. So she vents the reactor. The operation is effective, but the fumes from the reactor drive Jim away, breaking his bond. The pressure in his suit is also reducing. He informs Aurora what occurred, and she rushes to another suit and brings him in. He apologizes to her again. She puts on a suit and flies out to get him, but her rope is too short. She's pushed back, but she takes his rope and pulls him in. Aurora pulls Jim inside the hospital, only to discover that he has already died. She uses Mancuso's wristband to bypass medical regulations and resurrect him. The medical pod does the procedure automatically and revives Jim. Aurora forgave him. Later, Aurora repairs Arthur, and they give Mancuso a befitting space burial. Jim takes her to the infirmary and informs her that he has discovered a method to utilize the medical pod as a sleep chamber. He instructs her to enter the pod and ride out the remainder of the voyage there. But, as it turns out, she refuses and chooses to remain awake with him on the ship. Jim ultimately proposes to her, and they spend their lives aboard the ship. 88 years later, the Avalon lands at Homestead 2. The crew awakens to discover the ship in an unexpected condition. Aurora sends them a letter describing the story of her and Jim's lives aboard the ship, while the others are asleep. 